talk about you talked about intersectionality and mm -hmm. you know intersectional feminism is is coming to to bear and um, an understanding of that which is the is I, I know that you were probably using intersectionality in different contexts but intersectional feminism being the different layers mm -hmm. you know me as a white woman going into a situation as simply just being a, I only have woman as right. that label, but then you start adding, um, you know, start adding labels, and I will call them labels, um, that stand in the way and become mm -hmm. barriers. So, um, and I know that that Buffy is a huge voice for for this movement. So, what you know, as a man filming all of this, and what one, what what role do you see feminism playing? Um, obviously, you've been doing this for the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. And everything has evolved, um, kind of while that was happening. So great timing on yeah. your part, um, unbeknownst to you, riding the wave. Um, so what what do you feel like is the role of men and women together, um, and very specifically toward toward the the direction that we're going? So. Um our, our film has a majority of women, mm -hmm. but there's a few brave men in there. That's good men. And, yes. and I, I, I should give kudos to those men because those Please are do. the men that are not just feminists, they are vocal about it. Yeah. Unashamed, unafraid about it. Uh, and that's not always easy for in, in this society of ours. Now, it's changing. You, know, you might remember when our Prime Minister of Canada took, uh, took office and assign a cabinet with half women half and women. some journalists asked him why why yeah. did you do that and he answered because it's 2016 like, <laughs> uh, well this is this is what's changing right there's yeah. this new consciousness mm -hmm. people are aware and a lot of men are aware not all men are aware mm -hmm. but there's a few good ones that are in there side by side with women and certainly all of the men that are in this film are such vocal advocates for it Yes. And so I will, rather than answer with my own words, I'll paraphrase one of them. A white man who married an Inuit woman and does Inuit music, which is inherently political because at some point in time it was forbidden by the state. Wow. So he says at some point in regards to race mm -hmm. that we need to uh, make do with the notion that white people have a huge responsibility in ensuring that indigenous rights, and you could insert any other rights here, right. are uh, respected. Because part of our responsibility as white people is the fact that we partake in racism, whether we want it or not. Yes. We partake in discrimination, whether we want it or not. Bias. Sometimes we're not aware of it. Uh, and, and sometimes, even though we're not actively doing it, we're benefiting from a whole system. Exactly. But if you go to indigenous rights, uh, which again, kind mm -hmm. of connects with it women's does. rights. If you go to indigenous rights, you also know that Nowadays, you are benefiting for, from a whole system that brought you to the position where you are today mm -hmm. because other people have been trampled have been, through the process. Yes, exactly. And so this applies to women, this applies to Afro-Americans. Mm -hmm. This is how I was talking about intersectionality. We're, we're really coming to a point where people have different backgrounds, different experiences. Mm -hmm. Some are positive, some are negative. Some things are pros, some are cons. But what, what is important is for us to be able to acknowledge what they are, yes. to put words yes. in those experiences and to make sure that we are aware of them and that mm -hmm. we try it as best as we can as human beings. Mm -hmm. This is not to say that we won't fail or that we can fail, exactly. but to try as best as we can to keep that in check. Yeah, Because mm -hmm. obviously you're never going to have a group of people, a diverse group of people that all think the same, exactly. that all have the same experiences. Uh, and there's been a lot of, there is always a lot of finger pointing at whoever mm -hmm. says something. What's your experience? Yeah. What's your right to say this? And I think what's becoming important is how people are starting to approach each other with the uh, aim of allowing the space for everyone to say what they have to say yeah. and participate in the conversation. And people are also learning when not to participate in that conversation. Yes. So I'll, I'll give you a specific example. Uh, there's many important indigenous issues related mm -hmm. to this film. There's one in particular that we avoided. Uh, and that was the issue of the missing and murdered indigenous women. So mm -hmm. there's about 1,300 missing and murdered indigenous women in Canada. If you take that as a proportion of the population of indigenous people in Canada, you're talking about an epidemic. Unsolved cases, mm -hmm. right? These are unsolved cases. Mm -hmm. You uh, will no doubt 
hear people tell you that there's more than that. That the uh, Royal Canadian it's Mounted Police Canada. has very, uh, very modest numbers in there. Yeah. In mainstream society, this would be a scandal. This, I mean, mm -hmm. this, they, there's no, cr no, there's no doubt that society would be outraged if a thousand mm -hmm. women had disappeared or been murdered or yes. raped. In Canadian society, this is kind of a thing that is in the background. It, mm -hmm. it happened and folks say, oh, you know, whatever. It's, it's a thing. Well, yeah. female musicians, female, female indigenous musicians have stopped being okay with it. And they are now... And they're telling the story. They're telling the story. They're angry. They are, and rightly so, yes. they are making it known. They are bringing it to you in your face time after time after time. Yeah. And we did not include that in the film. And there was a deliberate reason we did not. Uh, it's obviously you're talking about uh, loved ones that disappeared mm -hmm. and it's a sensitive topic. The yeah. group of people that gathers the families uh, is very protective of the issue. And yes. we thought, A, as non-Indigenous people, it's, it's not our place to go into this conversation. Secondly, uh, all of those people will be very different. They will have different thoughts. So again, not our place to go and insert ourselves in there. Uh, and the third and perhaps most important issue is that women are the ones leading the charge on this. And some of the women in our film, Tanya Tagak, Iskwe, Lila Gilde, they're super famous musicians that all have songs talking about this, really uncomfortable songs. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I remember doing a Q&A with Iskwe. Mm -hmm. And when I speak about Iskwe, I, I uh, think about, I, I grew up in a family with only women. Uh, other than me and my dad. Your tribe of women. <laughs> it's my tribe, it's of women. tribe of women. My generation, it was yeah. just me, and, and then there was my dad, and then there were a lot of women. Okay. And uh, all of them really strong, stubborn women. My aunts, my grandmother, my sister, my mom. And so I think that benefited me, that I learned how to deal okay. with this uh, negotiation. Yeah. Not a lot of men are comfortable with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I realize that men are very afraid of outspoken Strong women. women. <laughs> yeah. Well, Isque is very outspoken. And uh -huh. we did a screening once together uh, and did a Q&A. And mm -hmm. someone asked the question about that. Well, like, why did you not include this? This is an obvious thing. And I tried to answer in a polite right. way right. why I kept myself out. And this was a white man. Uh, taking a mightier than thou attitude that I yes, needed to talk that about. You needed this. to stand up for And yeah. Isque steps in and says, No, uh, what PJ is saying is that there's a difference between being an ally and taking over the space that someone else requires. And that's what we try to do. We are trying to disseminate, amplify a message. Yeah. But the way we shot this documentary was. Uh, as someone else's voice. That's a statement that we make off the bat. It says right there on screen, this is not our story. We yes. want to recognize the artists, the youth leaders, the culture keepers, yes. and all the indigenous communities that welcomed us. This is their story, and we try to tell it as best as we could. I love that's, that. that's all we can do. Uh, people need to be able to speak their own truth. Uh, and if you have a platform to amplify that, do that, and then step aside and let people follow their follow their, uh, their road. I love that. Some of the things that you said, and I do think that this continues to be um, the role of film, but just also the role of us in, in, and definitely the role of tribe of women and what we do, the role of us as people, and that one is raising consciousness. Mm -hmm. So um, the problem seen is the problem solved, right? So that it's the role of all of us to raise consciousness. And so we, a lot of times we say the problem seen is the problem solved. And the challenge with that is that the problem being seen it usually comes with very difficult conversations. Mm -hmm. um, you're talking about the harshness, and you're talking about you know the the, the the we have to bring the ugly forward and for it to be seen. And nobody really wants to see or talk about that. Yeah. And um, but at the same time, when we do, it's interesting to me when we do a when we do a tribe talk and we bring people together to have those hard conversations in a safe place. It's amazing to me how um, how relieved people are mm -hmm. at like, okay, now we can talk about this. And not only can we talk about it, 
now we can go and do something about it. Yeah. And so I love that um, that you have um, been able to bring that. The other is that um, you know that collective swell because then we don't feel alone. Yeah. So we're telling these stories. We don't feel isolated and siloed anymore. We can come together and and solve the problems together. Yeah. So um, those are all beautiful things that you're doing through that. And um, thank you for your more good men words. You are <laughs> one. High thank five. <laughs> Appreciate that. And, um, and for this movie, I think it's going to be um, powerful. And also bringing um, these women to light and for shifting gears. My goodness, that's one of the hardest things to do. So yeah. I'm really glad that you did that to tell the story. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. And we loved it. Thank you Thanks. very much. Sometimes I need to unplug. Sometimes I've got to reboot. Sometimes I just want to sleep. But I always want to connect with you. Get into Brew Moods, aromatherapy lotions powered by a mindfulness app.